Greetings, salutations, and all good things in between. What's up, everyone? Matt here. Happy Friday. Hope you had a good week. Hope you got a lot of stuff done. I know I've been ridiculously productive. I'll tell you what, this year. <laughs> oh, man. So what do I got planned for this week? Well, this week, I'm really going to kind of take it easy. I've had a lot of really good questions come in from YouTube and a couple other places. And so I'm going to spend some time today just answering your questions. So if you have anything that you are working on right now and you're here in the live stream and you want to know what's what, put it in the live chat. I'm going to cover that at the end of the thing. To start off with, I'm going to head on over to YouTube and answer some of that. My patrons have asked some questions. I got a really good one that I'm going to cover. That's something I've been meaning to cover for a while. We'll talk about that. All right, enough of this. Thanks for joining me. I do appreciate it. Let's get to it. All right, so thanks for joining. I appreciate everybody here. I see there's already a question. Dustin Whitmire has got a question already. I'll get to it in the end. Thanks, man. Uh, the first thing that I want to cover today is kind of an update for uh, all of my, anybody that has access to the private folder. So inside there, there is the standard starting template, standard auto table that I use for everything, right? Um, I've added a column inside there because, well, um, it just kind of made sense to add this in there. You see, uh, so this green column here is the label. Um, yeah, you know, I used to never, never include a label column like this, yet every, every table I make needs a label column because it, ultimately like why what i'm really what's really going on there is after a while uh, you know you have a table let's say it's an order right um what would you want to use for the label for your order maybe you have a column that is the order number okay but that's going to be a number column that's just the number so now your label is like one two three four well, that's not really very helpful you know what i mean Something that might be a little more helpful would be maybe number one, two, three, four, or order number one, two, three, four. And when I say number, I mean a hashtag. Um, so it's things like this, like eventually, no matter what table I'm working on, users, orders, products, time logs, m <laughs> name it, you know what I mean? <laughs> Anything, ultimately, it always comes down to, I need to create another column that is like a combination of a few things, and I'll use that as the label. All right, well, the point of the standard starting template is for things like this. Whenever I find things that are like, man, I'm doing this all the time. I'd like to not have to constantly redo this all the time. That's the point of the standard starting template is you find these things and encode them inside this so you can just when you need to move on to the next one. So I've added this label column here. It's right at the first. Um, a key point, this needs to be left as the first uh, editable column. Uh, if you move that away from being over here in the front like this, uh, what can happen is, uh, you know, if I have like a, the name of the user right here or something of that nature, Sometimes the system will think that that's more important than the column that I want to use as the label. Even though I've got no parameter uh, like settings inside up here to tell the system this column is the label. But there's heuristics that come into play when AppSheet's loading the tables in. Even when you have no parameters inside there, there's still some other stuff that runs and it tries to figure out what's going on. And that's one of the things that happens. It's like a final pass that happens at the end. And so the key to kind of getting the label to always be the label is, well, the first data entry thing where I can actually put something in the column that largely gets marked as the label, period. Like that's one of the hard checks that the system makes. So by leaving the column here 
at the front like this, you will have a better chance of this always being marked as the label, especially since it has the note parameters inside it to mark it as a label. That's just the one little PSA that I wanted to throw out there for anybody that's using the standard starting template. I've thrown that on there. So if you have anything that you've copied or made a derivative of somewhere else, you're going to want to come here and grab this column and throw it in that. All right. Other than that, that's the, that's really all the kind of little, um, news type stuff, if I, if, if you will, that I'm going to really cover this week. Um, just kind of touching on things a little out of order in terms of app sheet news, not a whole lot. Steady progress with the day, with the, the new desktop UX steady progress. Every day, it seems like there's another bug thing that's coming out, another bug fix that's coming out saying, Hey, there was this problem. We just fixed it. And I don't know about you, if you play with the new desktop experience at all, but it's kind of gotten to the point now to where when you turn it off and you go back to the original style, it's really limiting. Yeah, it, it, they, the, the new desktop UX is fantastic. And if you'd like to get a taste of what the new desktop UX ex experience is like, as well as possibly find something, some resources that can help you along in your app sheet journey, head on over to multitechvisions.com slash answers. I am soft releasing a new resource, new portal. Um, I'm calling it the answer portal. It is basically the hub for all things multitech visions. Uh, and I've got big plans for this thing. Uh, <laughs> what you see over there inside the app is scratching the surface. Uh, I've got, I'm working on a way to visualize the learning curve of AppSheet. And if you do any kind of research into the learning, into learning curves, you immediately find out a learning curve is an entirely relative thing. Meaning I learn differently from you, 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 from you. From you. We all learn differently, which means there is no one learning curve. There is no one way that I can just say, this is the learning curve of AppSheet. Hey, doesn't work that way. So yeah, a lot of complicated stuff coming down the line. Check it out. Let's move on the, to the, the meat and potatoes of what I'm going to do today. A lot of good questions. All right, the first question that I'm going to cover today comes from one of my Patreon supporters, and their question is centered around the answer is private tables. Their question was, is there a way to privately share an app to multiple users to maintain their own data tables, but use a single app for development and version control? Private tables. Private tables are exactly what you're asking for in this question. Um, it is a feature that you can turn on inside of your AppSheet apps. Basically what it allows you to do is you have a single app that serves as the thing that you're using to control what's going on, right? Your single version control, single, all of that happens inside that, but the database, right? That actually where the data is stored is actually created inside the user's Google Drive folder and they cre it creates a new Google Sheet and then everything is stored over there. Now, in order to turn that on, uh, here we go. So I've got a, an app here. This is my manual sorting sample app that you can find on my app sheet portfolio. Uh, so where would you go to turn this on, right? So you would go to data over here. And if you're using the improved editor, so it's data over here, right? And then you go to this little more um, and you say view data source. Nope, that's not the one. Um, where is the settings for this now? Oh, here it is. Table settings. You go up to table settings and then inside, um, let's see, where's it at? Uh, here it is right here. So inside security, you'll find this little toggle here that says shared. If you turn this off, what happens is this is turning on the private table feature. Um, 
you'll see they mention private table documentation right here. Um, but this is, this is the toggle that you turn off if you don't want to share the data source, meaning I don't want the app to use a singular shared data source for everybody, I want everybody to have their own private data source for this table. So this is the fun thing. This is a table by table setting. So I can have some of my apps, or I'm sorry, I can have some of my tables where they're shared tables, meaning I could have like a, a settings page where I've got some values that I'm using to control like high level master things for everybody. I could have a user's table. I could have X, Y, Z tables. And then when I want like a private table, I can just build that out how I want it to be. Come over here and turn this toggle off. And then anytime somebody opens the app, what happens? Okay. They load the app. The app sees, hey, we got a private table. Goes to, the Google, goes to the Google Drive, makes a table, and associates their data with whatever this table is that you're dealing with here. Now, that sounds great, right? It sounds like it would be the perfect solution for what you're looking for, but there are several limitations to this that have made it to where me personally, I have never used this feature ever. Um, it ultimately, it has always come down to this is going to be way more of a pain than it might be worth. But what am I talking about? Okay. So the, if we think about AppSheet, right? The, the thing that sets AppSheet uh, aside from a lot of other no code platforms and app builders that are out there is the ability for rapid iterations, right? I can come into this app and in seconds, make an update that will completely change something. In minutes, I can add entirely new areas of functionality inside the app. You give me a week, I can make a whole platform. You could pivot so fast, right? It's that flexibility that really sets the app sheet uh, platform apart from all of the rest. Everything else is really powerful, but they all have their little meh, right? App sheets like, <laughs> do whatever you want, have fun. When you bring in a private table though, right? You're, you're limiting your ability to modify the database. Why? Well, if I have a shared table and I want to add a new column to that, I go to my version of the table that I have in my Google Drive that's powering the app and I make my modifications and we're done, right? I make sure I tell everybody, hey, update your app, blah, 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 we're good. With private tables, you can't do that. I don't have access to their private table. That's their table, it's in their Google Drive. Now they could share it with me and then I'd have to go through and I could make the modifications to their table for them. But how many people do you have? Yeah, you see the problem here? You see where I'm going with this? Or maybe I don't wanna manage that. Maybe I have highly technical users and they like stuff like this. And so I come up with a sheet of like, these are the changes that you need to do. Step one, two, three, four, five. And then they can change their database, right? Okay, well now you're relying on that person to do it right. To name the columns the same thing, to have the columns in the same order, to not make any typos. You see where I'm going? Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of, and like all of that, <laughs> it's gonna fail, right? Um, all right, so there's, that's the main difficulty that I've always seen with working with private tables. And I've tried to go down this route a couple of times. Um, I've even had some clients come to me and like, I explained these sort of limitations and they're like, no, it's fine, we'll work with it. And ultimately they all failed. Like we all, everything stopped using the private table and we went to like a regular, it's the regular like user security. We have a user table with role permissions and we use security filters to limit the data. And we just went that route. Um, okay. But, but now if you did want to, now I, like I said, I've been down this road with people. So I have some solutions to like mitigating some of these problems that you can, that you can work with. Uh, but I'm just throwing it out there. It was more work than it was worth. And we just, in the end, we ended up just doing a shared table with user security permissions and that was it.
Okay, but what what if I wanted to do it private? So the thing that you can do is you can um, inside your your table, right? So like I've got let's say I've got this products table, and I want each person to have their own products, right? Okay, but you see I only have a I only have four columns inside here. Okay, if I wanted to make this products table a private table so that each person had their own copy of it, but I still wanted to make it to where I could still advance my app and keep things progressing if I wanted to, the thing to do is to add in a whole bunch of extra columns into the mix. You can add in like fill in the blank, as many columns as you want, 50, 100, 200, whatever. You can add in any number of extra columns into your tables here and just mark them as hidden. Like leave it as a text or whatever. Get rid of any kind of formula that AppSheet may have put inside it while it was trying to figure out what you were trying to do with this column and just hide it. And it's literally just there sitting here waiting for you when you need to do something else. Um, the, the real nice thing here is that um, with, with AppSheet, the name of the column in your data source and the name of the column in your AppSheet app don't have to match. They should, they should. And if you regenerate and they don't, it will cause problems. But if you want to get into this, like, mm -hmm, oh, we're going to go into the, like, maybe we might, might regret going down this route, but hey, we'll try it anyways. If you want to go that route, right? You can add these extra columns into the mix. Uh, and then that gives you the ability to where later on when I need to add, a, oh crap, we forgot to do a, a date for when the thing was first, whatever. Okay, well, I have all these extra columns so I can go to that extra column, rename it to whatever I want to call it, right? Change this data type, add functions on it, put formulas, make actions, do automations. Like I could do all the things because I haven't changed the structure of the table. I just took over one of the columns that was already there. And so it'll be a little weird for that person because now this empty column that's called extra or whatever, you know what I mean? Like extra column number four, like now all of a sudden that has a date inside it and it's doing something. So it'll be a little weird when they look at the data source and you know, you could be like, ah, oh, rename this column this. Yeah, right? Mitigation techniques you could use. What do you do if you need to make a massive change though? Like, okay, so I had some extra columns. We've used all those columns. What do I do then? Okay, the, uh, a very common technique for managing versions of an app sheet app is to create what's called a development version, right? So if we come to, again, just go back to this app sheet app and I go to manage and I go to versions. Um, so if you have, a, uh, what's it called? If you have an enterprise license, right? You can set what's called a stable version here. And this is fant a fantastic feature that if you have an enterprise account, this is really nice. Gives you the ability to lock a version and then I can keep working on it and then eventually release that. And like, I can individually point people at the old one, one by one. Like I can say, I want Mark to look at the old one, Sally to look at the old one, but I want Jim to look at the new one. Like I can do that. I can even do things to where it's like AB test. I can say, give me 50% of the users, 50, 50. Give me 70% of the users using the old one, 30% of the new one. You can do things like that. There's a lot of really advanced sort of version control you can do once you get into the, the enterprise license. But if you don't have this, right? The other thing that you can do is right above the stable version, it's called App Upgrade. App Upgrade is available to everybody. And what it allows you to do is you can basically create a copy of your app that's a development version, right? So I've got a live version here and everybody's using this and it's happy and it's stable and cool, green, right? And then I've got, I copy it and I don't make a new database. My copy is tied to the old database, but it's a new app. Now, I can break this thing to my heart's content. I can do whatever I want. I can add tables, remove tables. I can, can't change the column structure because it's shared with the other one, but like I can do whatever I want with my development one. And then when I get to a point where I'm like, cool, I'm happy. We need to switch everybody. 
I can come to this app upgrade feature and put the ID of my development version here and hit this app upgrade version and everything's copied over to the live version, right? And so in those ways, you could create a system that would allow you to use private tables in an app that would allow for longevity in that, in that way. Add some extra columns into the ones uh, that you know are going to be private tables so that you can keep developing as you're going. And then eventually when you reach a point where you have to do a hard fork, make a copy, do what you need over there. And then eventually when you're ready to go, you'll have to migrate all of your data from there to here and then like redirect all of your old URLs that were pointing to the old app to the new app type of thing. And there's a lot of different ways that you can make this a little easier. There's a lot of nuance involved with this. So if you have any questions about this private table thing, any more version control, um, I I've been down this version control stuff a lot of times. So any questions you have about this stuff, feel free to let me know and we can get to it. Okay. That's all I've got for that first question from my Patreon supporters. If you have any questions and you want them answered, head on over to the answer portal. That's the place that I'm trying to collect all the answers. I'm trying to make a singular place so that it's easy for me to keep going. All right, let's move on to some of the comments that I have inside the uh, YouTube live stream. First one we got here, Dustin Whitmire. Thank you for being here. He asks, can you speak some to the use of Looker Studio, former, formerly Data Studio, um, with AppSheet? I'd like to create a live dashboard that displays folks' sign-in details when they arrive for a lab. I like it. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot... <laughs> There is a lot of advancement coming with the integration between AppSheet and Looker Studio. Hey, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's go to Looker. Yep, here we go. Um, so if we just go here, um, I'm, I'm not really going to dive in a whole lot. Um, I think I had a thing. Nope, I deleted it. Aw. Yeah, if I go here, yeah, it's gone. I deleted it. That sucks. Um, but, you know, if we just go into one of the random things they have here as a, as a sample. Um, okay, so the, the, yeah, so there is a native integration that's already built in with Looker Studio where you can literally say, I want my data from that app sheet app. So that gives you the ability to where it, it's live in a sense, right? And this is where, like, these are the things that really kind of, like, get my juices flowing because I think about things like, okay, well, one of the one of the biggest selling points for AppSheet is the ability to combine multiple disparate data sources all in one. Like, I remember when I first started this, when I first started being a consultant in the app sheet game and I was talking to people that have been in business for a while and they've been dealing with trying to find these solutions. When they found out that you could do Excel, Salesforce, Google Drive, fill in the blank, fill in the blank, fill in the blank, all different data sources all tied into this one app sheet app as a singular place. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> choking on my own spit <coughs> and then you're able to like run reports on that i'm able to take data points from all these things and correlate them all in one space it was a huge selling point now with the ability to combine looker studio with that sort of thing in app sheet you've got the ability to take all these data sources that are disparate combine them together inside your app process that data in some way that creates, you know, whatever kind of derivatives you need out of that for analysis or whatever, then you can take that and just use the native data that you've got inside your app as a source for these high level 
<laughs> amazing sorts of graphs and visualizations that you can create over here in Looker Studio. The benefit, right, is that like one of the biggest, one of the biggest difficulties that, that I typically face with students is people fall back on what they're familiar with, right? So, you know, we're trying to learn how to do something new and it's difficult. And so we have a proclivity to fall back on what we know and what's comfortable for us and what's easy for us. And for a lot of people, when they're, when they're coming into the app sheet world, they're coming from the spreadsheet world, which means they're comfortable with spreadsheets. Oh, well, I could just go over there and just and be done, right? The problem is that when you start integrating an app sheet into your, your workflows and everything, well, now you've got all of these virtual columns. The virtual columns don't exist inside your database, inside your data source like that. You know what I mean? Like you've got that list of related whatevers, right? And then maybe out of that, you've got, you're creating derivatives out of that. Like, okay, out of, and then so I have the, the related orders, right? But then I've got a data subset of just the, the unfulfilled orders and out of that, I'm getting a list of all of the customers and I'm getting a list of all the products and I'm getting a list of all of the order totals, which I'm wrapping in a sum, which gives me a, okay, all those virtual columns don't exist in the database. So if you're trying to go and create something with the Google sheet, you can't, you, cause you can't visualize that. The thing doesn't exist over there. You can try and create a way to like physicalize the stuff, but it, you're, barking up the wrong tree. This sort of integration over here gives you with, with being able to integrate your app sheet app as a data source for Looker Studio, gives you the ability to use those virtual columns, gives you the ability to use those. Man, I, I haven't really, full disclosure, I haven't really dove into what you can do with Looker Studio combined with an app sheet app. When they announced that you could use the database, that you could use app sheet as a data source for looker studio i went over there and was like yo let's see what we can do and kind of poked around a little bit and and came to the conclusion wow um i need about 50 hours <laughs> to play with this and figure out what i could do and like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um maybe at some point I'll, I'll dive in there and do that because the the real thing that i that that I think that this is gonna be really beneficial for is the thing that people have always wanted with AppSheet is a live updating v like database view. As in somebody just did the on the thing over there, I want the to throw a record on the TV on the wall so I can see the thing that just happened, right? You can't do that in AppSheet because it's a passive system. You gotta have some kind of interaction with the app in order for it to do whatever. It background updates every once in a while, but you know what I'm talking about. This. Where are you going? Another way, always another way. Wrong button. This, <laughs> this one, the ability to take your app sheet data and use it in a Looker Studio will bring about the ability of this live database, this live dashboard that you want to see. For the longest time, I've been telling people, just go to Google Sheets and make some visualizations that you want on the sheet. Like make another tab that is the thing that you want to see and then like put that tab on the TV. Like, you know what I mean? Like, okay, the TV is showing this computer and this computer is open to that sheet and we're just, there you go. Like just do that. Looker Studio is a cleaner way to do that. Good stuff. One of these days I'll need to do a deep dive inside Looker Studio, very similar to the way that I did a deep dive on QuickChart, which um, that was fantastic. There's a lot of really good stuff. And I really just kind of scratched the surface with QuickChart, to be honest with you. There's <laughs> way more that you can do over there. All right, let's go back and see what else have we have in the question. Vast CNC says, I have a question. My goal is to give clients a sales management and inventory application, but let them keep their own data and not mess up the way the app functions with headers, logic, and this, whatnot, whatever. Um, is there a default folder hierarchy to the table that's added to their Google Drive? The private tables would be very static, sales, sales history, and inventory. Okay, vast CNC. So, um, is there a default folder hierarchy to the table that's added to their Google Drive? Yeah, 
So it the inside your app, you've got a, um, let me see, let me find, let me find my app. Let me get an app open so that we can dive into it. Here we go. Okay. Um, so inside your app, right? If you go to the info page and up to properties and app properties, um, in the bottom of this, you have the default app folder. And so as long as you make sure that you have that set to the right thing, then yeah, the, when the system is making things, it should make it from this. The default app folder starts from the root folder of the Google Drive, right? So it should follow this. It'll name the sheet the exact same thing that it's named that, that you've got um, for your sheet. Uh, the column names will be the exact same column names. Uh, everything is one for one. Uh, any of the data that you have in your sheet will be represented inside that sheet as well, um, which is kind of nice because then you could like pre-fill some stuff and then give them the ability to add more or to customize things. Um, so like you could pre-fill a database of products and then now they've got their own product table, right? And they can change everything to their heart's content. It's all private. You can't view unless they share it with you. All good to go. Um, there's a lot of nuance and with these sorts of things, um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of holes that you could fall into. You know what I mean? So if you're going down that route, I'm be really curious to hear the difficulties or struggles that you face. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know. Maybe I'll do a deep dive. Going back to the questions here, I got one from Dustin Whitmire. He says, do you think improvements down, are down the road with document templates? My number one frustration with AppSheet is creating templates, headers, footers, pagination, easy ways to test my changes, etc. Yeah, the, um, I, I, I can understand 100% what you're talking about there, Dustin, with... Um, the difficulties of the templates because man, that sort of stuff is legitimately all the problem. <laughs> like, yeah, trying to go in and make, to get your, the PDF that the system is producing to look just right. Do you know what I mean? Like getting it, eh, ah, there's just a little too much space over on this side. I'm gonna move it just a little bit. Like, and this is the thing that I, anytime I'm working for a client and we get to a point where it's like, all right, I want to make some files. It's like, okay, all right, you need to realize this is the most time consuming thing, period, in AppSheet. And it's not because it's hard. It's not because it's hard. The reason it's time consuming is because I make the change in the Google document template, wait for it to save, go over to my app, hit the thing that kicks the... The, the automation to go again, wait for that to finish, then go to the, the data source, go to Google Drive, find the file, open the file, look and see what it looks like now. Oh crap, it didn't, didn't work right. Back to the Google Drive, back to the Google folder, to the document, make another little modification, back to the app, kick the thing, wait for it, back to the data source, open the file, did it do, that's the problem is that it takes me 30 seconds, 40 seconds. And depending on what you're doing, like the file that you're generating, if it's huge and you've got tons of images that are inside there and you're doing all kinds of like nested whatevers and you've got lookups and selects and you've got a lot of heavy lifting going on, like that thing takes time. Like it's not a, you know what I mean? It doesn't just get, doesn't just happen. It's like a, you kick the button and you're sitting there and it's chewing on it. It's chewing on it. It's chewing on it. It's chewing on it. Maybe you go get something to drink and you come back and it's finally done. And like, you got to go through that process every time you make a little change and you like make a whole bunch. And anytime you want to see what it looks like now, you got to go through all of that. That's the part that makes working with templates time consuming. It's not that it's hard. It's just, there's this giant loop that you've got to go through in order to find the, in order to see the results again. And as far as ways to speed that up, no, there is none. 
it's literally just something that like, yeah, eventually, you know, especially if you're a perfectionist, like I'm a perfectionist. So for me, any time that I get to like, oh, well, I need to make sure that this looks the way that I want it to look. <laughs> that is a, uh, uh, yeah, a thing that, that takes a long time in order for me to make, to get it just right so that it's looking just how I want it. Yeah, I'll spend hours and hours and hours trying to make sure these things look right. Um, but that's just me. I'm a perfectionist. As far as improvements down the road, I don't think so. Like that system that they have for generating documents and everything is very robust. Um, it's very feature dense. It's very, you know, there's a lot you can do. Um, I don't really foresee them changing that very much. If anything, they'd find some things that they could add to it. Um, but like, but you see the, you see the, the problem, like if we're trying to find somewhere to make that faster, there, there kind of isn't a way to make that faster. You know what I mean? It's already almost as fast as it gets. Cause like I'm saying, all right, wait for the, I, I did some changes. I got to wait for those to save. All right. Now I got to go kick the thing and that takes so long to do. And then I can go look at it. You know what I mean? So like maybe the things for how long it takes the, the automation to like make the file, maybe that some point in the future that'll get faster, but that's largely dependent upon what you're doing. If I've got 10,000 records in a thing and I'm saying, cool, select for me all of those where the lookup of this and the select of the blah, 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 blah. And like, if I'm doing crazy stuff, like it's going to take a long time. Or if I'm using, like I'm, I'm creating a file that has a whole bunch of images and all of these images are like four megabytes. All right. Okay. Well, suddenly like I have 400 megabytes worth of stuff that I'm trying to deal with. It takes time. That's that. Let's see, go back here. Uh, Dustin, that was Dustin. So Sakir Ali asked how to email data with the help of filtered data. That's a good question and something that I actually have a solution for. So if you go to my YouTube channel and you search for report, you'll find, there you go. I have this, how to build a uh, what's it called? It's called Report Table Build Foundation. And uh, there's the thumbnail for you. And this video is all about how to create a system that would allow me to essentially create a query, a querying system for my database. Like I've got a list of orders, right? But I want to query that. I want to be able to get a report that says, all right, show me all of the orders for January of 2022 that were, that included this product and blah, 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 and blah, 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 right? So in order to do something like that, you need to have a space to record the query you're trying to do. Like if I'm trying to say, okay, well, I only wanna see things from January 1st of 2022, I need a place to record that date. And then like an end date and then the customer, and then the this, and then the that, and then the this. I need a place for all of that. So in this video that I have here that you can go check out on my, on my channel, there is um, what I, I create a report table. It's literally a table where I've got these columns to store all of the stuff that I wanna do. And so that gives you the ability to go in there and say, cool, start date, end date, this customer, this status, fill in the blanks, like, and you can all to your heart's content. Now there are some nuance things that are critical, eh, helpful. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure the word to qualify it that are, I feel important to include inside your table, some columns that are not overtly apparent that I talk about inside this video, things like creating a column that holds the list of all of the things of all the IDs of the records that I'm eventually trying to print. Because if I have this master list stored inside of a column, suddenly everything becomes a whole lot easier. I don't have to do any of the heavy lifting anymore. It's all already done. It's right there. I've essentially cached the answer to my query, right? So there's a lot that goes on with this, but if you're trying to create some way where you can create an output 
or create a query system or a reporting type of system. If you want some way where you could have your own version of like the search and filter things that they have inside the app nowadays where I can filter based on this and this and this and this. If you want something like that, but you control it, right? Head on over to this video, look for reports, and that will show you how to do this. I have two versions of this. The first one is setting up the foundation. The second one is how to print to PDF, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and that's really the start of an evolution series here. Like I, I have plans to expand this into the future at some point when I get time and I'm not distracted by things like the answer portal, you know, you know how it goes, <laughs> but that's, um, that's really kind of the best advice that I can give you where I can point you to where you're going to be able to find a lot of, a lot of nuance I've already talked about. You're going to find a lot of resources that are already there. Head on over there and check it out. Got one more question down here from Vast CNC. At, he's a, let's see, at Dustin Whismer, maybe Looker Studio would be a better option for reports. Yeah, you know what I mean? It might be. So that's the thing. It depends on what you're shooting for, right? So if I'm trying to create something that looks like this, right? Where it's like I have really tight control and maybe I want the interactivity to come in. So like I can hover above and see what's what and like, you know, you could have the ability to click on things and like deep dive and filter and do whatever. Like, yeah, if you're wanting something like this, then you're going to want to go to Looker Studio. Um, if you're looking to create something that's more akin to like a, a report, like I want a PDF file, right? Maybe the template's the way to go. Or... Maybe there's some way to combine the two together. I, I've never, I've never thought about, is there a way to take a Looker Studio and like, can I get an image of what this looks like? And then like embed that in that over there. Hmm. Hmm. Ha <laughs> Yeah. So these, these are where all the things come from. People make these suggestions and I'm like, hmm. Hmm. That seems like it could be possible. Might have to investigate how to do that. Mm. We'll see in the future. All right. That is all the questions that people have inside the, uh, the chat. So I think I will move on over here. I'll do the chat time thing. I Hey, I want to thank everybody for showing up. I appreciate all the time that you invest in watching my content. Um, if you like what I do, give it a like, maybe subscribe. Those things really do mean a lot to me. They show me that what I'm doing is valuable and that I should keep going. So like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. Check out the answer portal. Um, there's a lot coming down the line for that. <laughs> It'll be a few weeks before I get that out, but um, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff coming. And if you want to get in on that action before it's released to the general public, um, the real kind of people who I'm doing all the, the real meat potato beta tests with are my apprentice people because, well, we've got meetings we have to do. So um, yeah, just to kind of tease of what's coming, I've got goal tracking, I've got, I'm gonna visualize the, the skills learning curve. Um, I am building out all of this, like the skills thing that's there right now is gonna pale into comparison to what I'm building out, what's gonna come down the line. Um, it, I'm essentially encoding all of the ideas that I've accumulated over the years of working with AppSheet, all the tips and tricks, all the things you should do, the things you shouldn't do, all of the techniques, all of the advanced functionalities, all of the modules, all of the all of the things, right? All of the things, I'm encoding all of that inside this skills area. And then I'm gonna find a way to visualize that in relation to you and how you learn. So if you wanna get down on that, you wanna be one of the first people to kind of test on that, check out some of the support tiers I got. All right, that's it, I'm out. Thanks for joining. I hope you have a happy weekend. Stay happy, stay healthy. And remember, when you're working on your AppSheet app, 
and you hit a roadblock, say it with me. Keep calm and abseed on!